morning and welcome to our service for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. We meet in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, 
increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The epistle is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning in the 7th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now if I do not do what I want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, do it but the sin that dwells within me. For I know nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I do. Now if I do not do what I want, it is not I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I do not do what it is that I good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my in myself, but I see in my members another law at war within the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of Christ. I pray that I may speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure about you, but I don't know how many of you come across yokes very often. Given modern farming techniques around here, it's probably some time, if ever, that you will have seen a yoke. Well, a yoke is a wooden or sometimes metal cross piece which is fastened over the necks of two oxen or similar kind of animal. The yoke is attached to a shaft, which then pulls a heavy load. In the past, you would, often, you would most often have seen a yoke when you saw an ox pull a plough or a wagon. So a yoke is a means of carrying a heavy burden. Rabbis also spoke of the Torah, the law, as being a yoke. Obedience to the Torah was a burden which Jewish believers were called to bear. But Paul points out the very human inability 
to bear such a burden. The law bans the very things we are inclined to do. I do the very thing I hate, he complains. And we've all been there. We know what it feels like to have done something that is wrong. We can kid ourselves that somehow we can't help it, but often we know. We know that we have chosen to do something wrong because we wanted to do it more than not doing it. And the law convicts us and we stand judged. Judged by a God who gave us this law. This then seems to be a God who asks more of us than we can handle. A God who has to be pleased by our shouldering of impossible loads. The yoke of the law is unbearable. Now, if this is how we live out our faith, it's no wonder our lives start to seem empty and hopeless. Hardly surprising that we look elsewhere to give meaning to our existence. And how on earth do we get others interested, let alone excited about a God who, wants, who insists on his pound of flesh? So is Jesus messing us around, or perhaps even worse, lying to us when he says that his yoke is easy? No one knows God without knowing the Son, Jesus tells us. Knowing the Son means having to pay particular attention to what Jesus says and what he does, to the kind of life that he lives. Not so that we can ask, answer a question about what Jesus did or did not do in any given place, but so that we can glimpse the signs of his breaking through into our lives to see where he might be inviting us, to see where he might be challenging us, to see where he might be guiding us. And not just you and me, the community of which we are a part, our church, and maybe even the world itself. Follow me is what Jesus says to the disciples as he calls them. Our Lord says to us, join me, learn from me in this new life that you have with me. For this is my yoke. Forget what you think you know, or what is expected of you, either by yourself, or by the world around you, or even what you mistakenly think by God. Follow me into a life where we both shoulder the burden. For my yoke is not to be borne alone. There are two places, one for you and one for me. We go through life together. Together, where we are vulnerable enough to be changed by what we see and hear Jesus do. Where we dare to hope because we see and hear the promises that Jesus is make. Where we willingly serve one another because that's what we see and hear Jesus do. This kind of following, or discipleship, has nothing to do with pleasing a God who is rather fed up with us and somehow needs to be humoured. Where is the good news of liberation in that? Nor is it simply about following the law, because that's what the law demands. Where is the willing to serve others, because I value them as a fellow child of God? And nor is it all about me, that I alone, I alone, must have the strength to bear this all. How can I be described as a follower of Christ if it's always me that's choosing the direction. When we slip into those patterns of thoughts and habits, we soon find that the yoke becomes heavier. We start to feel its strain, and it will tell in our lives and in our faith. Our faith becomes less a source of strength and more of a load to carry. And you know what? Others will see it too. You can hear them saying, if that's the Christian life, then I have enough burdens to shoulder without adding those to my own. No wonder perhaps our churches might start declining. Who wants that if this is the kind of life that we offer? What if we can believe the yoke of Jesus is like that described by Scott Hosey, as gentle and as kind as when someone you love lays his or hand on you to encourage you to love you, to lead you gently and lovingly where you should go and to that place where you can flourish. Now that's a yoke that I would willingly cast on my back.
It's a yoke that we can offer others, drawing us into a life which becomes once more meaningful and inspiring, hope-filled and loving, where we joyfully serve one another. Our lives become righteous, even exceeding that of the Pharisees and the scribes. And where we come to know God, to truly know God, that he delights in us simply for who we are, not what we have done. And so we affirm our faith with the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for our world, for all in authority, that they will be respectfully conscious of the weight on their shoulders, and that they will act responsibly for the people they serve, we pray for them in their personal lives, with the worries and cares that only they can see. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our church. We thank you for all the work that has gone and goes on going on during this lockdown. We pray that we may take what we have learned as we continue in God's mission, online or in person, to share the good news of life with God. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our families, friends and colleagues. We pray that as we walk alongside them, you will use us to bring them close to you and they will learn of your love. May we be sensitive enough to the needs of those around us, the people we see every day, perhaps fleetingly at the shops or in the bus queue or wherever. We have no idea what yokes or burdens they are carrying, or if they need a kind word. May we give it. We pray that we shall always see the positive in people, even when it's hard, and reach out to encourage them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are sick, for those who are suffering, and especially this day for Mary and Claire, Roy, Tim, Storm, Carolyn, Nigel and Lisa, Heather, Ethan, Anne, Michael, Penny, Jenny and Peter, for those at Swan House, for Margaret, Harry, Jenny, Isabel, Carol, Joe W and Becky. Give them strength, bring them hope and the reassurance of your eternal presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are dying and for those who have died. 
May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right in our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Set through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us of your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and we shall be healed. The body of Christ broken for us. The 
blood of Christ shed for us. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.